graphics, but check this out. This is really all you need to know about a meniscus. So here's obviously a diagram of the knee joint. So you get your femur, your tibia, and you can see the kneecap in front. So if you look down at your knee, that's what it looks like. Femur's the thigh bone, tibia is the shin bone, kneecap's right in front. Well, in between the bones, there's cartilage on the end of the bones. You see that, that white stuff, that's the on the end of the bone that's attached to the end of the bone that's articular cartilage. That is not what a meniscus is. The meniscus is this cushion that sits in between the joint and acts like a shock absorber. If you're looking at it from the top down, you can see they're kind of crescent shaped here and here. You have a meniscus on the medial side, that would be here on the inside of your knee, and the lateral side, that would be out towards your lateral malleolus, if you will. So a meniscus is, it's a type of cartilage, so you'll hear, you'll hear people say that they have a cartilage there, but it's a specific type of cartilage. It's not articular cartilage. Articular cartilage is what's attached to the end of the bone. That's what wears away and you get wear and tear arthritis. A meniscus is a separate type of cartilage. It's kind of like a cushion that sits in between the bones. I always explain to patients what it really is. Uh, it's like a marshmallow. So it sits in your joint like a marshmallow. So every time you take a step, it absorb some of that load. So I don't know if that's exactly the perfect analogy, but it certainly connects and make a lot, makes a lot of sense. And I think gives you the general concept of what the meniscus does. So it's a shock absorber, takes pressure off the articular cartilage. Because here's the truth about articular cartilage, and I mentioned this earlier, a lot of my practice is arthritis, which is the wearing away of articular cartilage. And once you're bone on bone, you're gone. Like, <laughs> that's the end of it. There's no way to grow new cartilage Boy, wait until we get some comments about that um, down below. There's no way to grow new cartilage, so stem cells don't work, unfortunately. So the meniscus is trying to protect the articular cartilage. So meniscus, <clears throat> very important, and tears are very common. In fact, if, if we did an MRI of everybody's knee, I'm talking about everybody's knee, people that did not have, did not have pain, what percentage of patients do you think would have a meniscus tear? dramatic pause. Uh, would you su be surprised to know that it's almost a third of people with no knee, knee pain have a meniscus tear? Well, why is that? Well, it kind of gets to the causes of meniscus tears. If you're young and healthy, that tissue is very, very strong. So if you have, if you have a meniscus tear and you're, you're say, an adolescent or in your young adult life, it was probably from a specific injury. I mean, you were going for a touchdown or something crazy. You were on the ski slopes and doing something crazy and you tore your meniscus. Those are acute traumatic tears. So that's a, that's a large category of tears. Now again, notice what I said. These acute tears tend to happen more in younger people because that meniscus is normal. So if you have an acute tear and the meniscus rips in two, let's say, that's a repairable situation. Here's what I mean. That big marshmallow, that crescent sitting inside the joint, if it tears in two, you can just sew it back together. So those are the acute traumatic that tend to happen in younger people. <clears throat> but as we mature, most meniscus tears are what we call degenerative. What that means is every time you step, the meniscus is getting squished. Every time you step, the meniscus is getting squish, squished. And what actually happens is it just frays over time. So then you go into the knee, the meniscus doesn't look like a big, healthy marshmallow that's just torn in two pieces. Those are the repairable kind that happen in young people. Now it looks like mush. It looks like shredded cheese. So there's really nothing to repair. So in young, healthy people that have a acute or sudden onset of uh, pain and a meniscus tear, those meniscus can be repaired. We'll talk about the recovery there. It's a way longer recovery. Versus if you're older, it tends to be more of a degenerative degenerative type of meniscus tear, which means it's kind of wear and tear, it's kind of shredded. There's nothing to sew back together. So two major types of meniscus tears, the acute tears that happen in healthy tissue and the more degenerative that happen as we age. So I was talking a little bit earlier about the treatment and the treatment if you repair your meniscus is very different than if you just take out the torn part. So the acute meniscus tear, you may go through a repair and I don't know if anybody listening now or later has had a meniscus repair, a true meniscus repair. But what that means is they're actually sewing it back together. That is a very long recovery. It's probably something like six weeks of not putting pressure on it. You can actually uh, move your knee right away. So you can, um, <clears throat> you know, work on motion. You, you can even do a CPM device, which is actually a continuous passive motion device that allows the knee to move. Actually, the movement of the knee 
uh, circulates that good synovial fluid actually leads to healing. So if you have a meniscus tear, it's a prolonged, if you have a meniscus tear that gets repaired, it's a prolonged recovery. You're probably six weeks off of it, even though you have early motion, it's a long drawn out recovery. It can be six months or longer back to full sporting activity. If you have a degenerative type of meniscus tear, and again, these are the ones that are more common, we're all gonna potentially get these over time. These types of tears, because it's torn kind of like shredded cheese, there's nothing to repair, we go in and remove the torn part. You may say, oh my goodness, don't, don't remove my meniscus. Well, you're right. I mean, you need the meniscus because it protects the cartilage from arthritis over time. But if it's torn, it's no longer protecting the articular cartilage. So if we go in, not to repair the meniscus now, not to sew it together, that's a long recovery, but instead just to remove the torn part of the meniscus, this is actually pretty quick. I actually tend to put my patients on crutches only for about two days. And yes, I send them to therapy. Some of them go, some of them don't go. We wanna minimize the swelling, uh, but we wanna get the motion back. And, and really after two days, you have no restrictions. You can take the ACE bandage off, you can put your full pressure on it and get back to life. So if you, if you have a friend or a family member and they say, oh, I had a meniscus repair, but they're walking on it within a couple of days of surgery, they probably didn't have a true repair where you sew the parts together. They probably had a repair type surgery where they just removed the torn part. Obviously, there's some huge advantages to just removing the torn part because it's a faster recovery. But remember what I said, if you could ever save your meniscus, you should. It's just that as we age, the meniscus tissue is softened and just not, not salvageable. So really two main types of meniscus tears, the acute traumatic and young healthy people, those can be repaired. But the more common is probably the degenerative that happens as we mature, kind of, kind of in my age group. So. Um, I'm curious, anybody listening now or later, uh, ha have you had a meniscus tear? What was your experience? Does some of this connect to you? Were, were you doing the long recovery type uh, or, or uh, was it more degenerative and a little bit, uh, little bit quicker back, a little bit quicker back to activity? You know, people often say, well, what did I do to tear my meniscus? Again, in youth, it's usually an injury, but as we mature, it can be it could be nothing at all. I mentioned earlier in this live that up to 30% of people have meniscus tears on an MRI. So if you MRI to everybody, 30% of people have a meniscus tear on their MRI, but no knee pain. So just because you have a meniscus tear doesn't mean you need surgery, by the way. I was mentioning earlier, if the meniscus is torn and degenerative, you can just remove the torn part. But, but just because you have a meniscus tear does not mean you need surgery. In fact, most of the time, they can be effectively treated by doing a couple simple things. One is trying to decrease the inflammation. Now, decreasing the inflammation Anything that irritates the knee can cause inflammation. And if you decrease the inflammation, it can certainly decrease the pain. So in a meniscus tear, <clears throat> say you're having increased pain, we think it's degenerative, we might do a steroid shot into the knee. A steroid shot's a very potent way to decrease inflammation inside the knee joint. And if you've ever had one, you probably realize that it's a little bit of pain having a steroid injection. I mean, it's a needle stick, like getting your blood drawn, there's a little pressure, but then it can provide great relief. And if it decreases the inflammation, you can kind of get back to life. Usually I combine that with physical therapy. Now there's nothing magic here about working with a physical therapist per se, but they can help you find the exact activity that you can do so you can get back to life. The reality is if we decrease inflammation, we have to return the knee to normal motion, and that's when you'll see significant improvement of your pain. So even if you've been told you had a meniscus tear, doesn't mean you have to have surgery. So that brings up the obvious question, how can I prove whether or not I have a meniscus tear? Well, an MRI is the only way to see it. So. I, I want you to understand this because I see patients all the time and they say, yes, I saw a doctor two years ago and he said I had a meniscus tear. And I always ask them, how did he know you had a meniscus tear? What I'm really asking is, did he just do x-rays or did he do x-rays in a physical exam and was pretty sure you had a meniscus tear? Here's what I'm getting at. The only way to see a meniscus tear or the health of the meniscus for that matter, is on an MRI. So if you had an x-ray and your doctor said you have a meniscus tear, he's actually making a clinical judgment call based on your symptoms combined with what the x-rays look like. Um, so if you haven't had an MRI, you don't really know for sure because you can't anatomically see it unless you have an MRI. So CT scan, technically a CT scan arthrogram could see an MRI, but we rarely do those anymore. Uh, meniscus tears cannot be seen on an x-ray. That's the takeaway point. That's what I want you to know. So if you've only had an x-ray, we don't really know for sure whether or not you have a meniscus tear. 
So here's a good question, and this comes up all the time, is, um, okay, maybe I am older, maybe I do have a little bit of arthritis, can I also have a meniscus tear? Absolutely yes, 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 yes. You can have both, you could, so remember, arthritis is the wearing away of cartilage that happens over time. So the cartilage gets thinner, the bones come closer and closer together. Now that you could see on x-ray. But you may have a sharp increasing in pain, and that may be because you have arthritis, but also now a new degenerative meniscus tear. Here's the problem, if you have arthritis, and a meniscus tear, it's kind of a judgment call about what the best treatment is. Remember I said earlier, anything that is wrong with the knee will cause inflammation, therefore cause pain. Well, arthritis can cause inflammation and pain, and so can a meniscus tear. It can cause inflammation and pain. So if you come in, you're inflamed, uh, and, and you have pain, so you have, you have swelling in the knee and you have pain in the knee, uh, how do I know? How do I know if you have just arthritis, right? Or if you have arthritis plus a meniscus tear? Well, x-rays are good. That's probably the first step that your surgeon makes is getting an x-ray. And we can see how bad the arthritis is. The cartilage is uh, worn all the way through in your bone on bone. Now that's a separate problem. But assuming you don't have severe arthritis, how do we determine? Well, we try to look at your symptoms. What is the timing? You know, meniscus tears often come with a prodromal phase. So you might have had pain for a while and then all of a sudden it gave way. That's kind of classic for a meniscus tear. You may have catching, popping, and locking. These can be associated with a meniscus tear. But again, these symptoms can also be related to arthritis. I'll bet it's at least four or five times a week I see a patient come in and they say, I never had any pain until this event. Sometimes that description of of pain is because of a meniscus tear. And sometimes it, it's arthritis. That's a very uncomfortable conversation to have for patient, with patients sometimes because they simply don't believe you. They said, look, that guy's not listening to me. I have had no pain in my knee until all of a sudden. Well, arthritis can cause that kind of all of a sudden pain as well. That's why it's really important to understand what's the timing, what do the x-rays look like? That's the first step. But again, the only way to see a meniscus uh, is on an MRI. So the, the MRI would tell you definitively one way or other, one way or the other, whether you have a meniscus tear or not. What are your, what are your comments? I'm trying to find your comments. I got somebody ugh, looking into the back. I got to grab my notes. Sorry about that. All right. So signs and symptoms we talked about. Diagnosis we talked about. Treatment options. Look, decreasing the inflammation, returning the need of motion. In a lot of cases, that will provide great relief. So even though you have meniscus tear, doesn't necessarily mean uh, mean that you need surgery. But here's also what I would tell you. Meniscus tears have very little ability to heal themselves. This is what I mean. Remember I said the meniscus is like a crescent cushion tissue in the knee? Well, the outside rim is called the red zone. That That's because it has some some vascularity. The meniscus overall is not very vascular, but the outside rim where it's attached to the knee capsule has pretty good vascularity. The very inside of the meniscus has virtually no blood supply. We call that the white zone. And then guess what we call the area of the meniscus between the red zone and the white zone? We call it the red white zone. <laughs> so meniscus tears that are close to the edge of the knee capsule. So out on the outside, I'll show you here on the diagram again. So here's the diagram of the meniscus looking top down. So if the meniscus tear is out here on the edge where there is some vascularity, there's a chance, particularly if you're young, that you can heal that meniscus because it's in what we call the red zone. Actually, those also, even if it requires repair, if the tear's in the red zone, they're more likely to heal. But if you tear your meniscus on the inside, further away from the edge of the knee joint, we call that the white zone, there's very little chance that it will heal because it's not getting any significant blood supply. Now remember, even though you have a meniscus tear, doesn't mean it will always hurt and doesn't mean you need surgery, but the meniscus has very little ability to heal itself. So let's take a specific example. Say you're 50, you have some arthritis, you go and you see the doctor, he says, hey, um, you know, your arthritis is not that bad, let's get an MRI, you're 50 and he does an MRI and you have a meniscus tear, but by the time you get back from your MRI, you've done anti-inflammatories, you've done therapy, you have no knee pain. The, the doctor says, look, you're 50, you have a meniscus tear, you have some mild arthritis, um, but you don't have pain, so no restrictions. Go do what you want. There are no restrictions if you have no pain. Great, so you go off. Two years later, your knee starts to hurt again. Do you still have a meniscus tear? Anybody? Anybody in the chat? 
Do you still have a meniscus tear? Yes. You have an MRI confirmed uh, meniscus tear and that meniscus tear is always going to be there. It really has no real ability to heal itself. So you did good for two years. You had no pain. That's why we didn't operate on you. But when you return, now we have to answer the question, uh, is is it because the, the meniscus is inflamed again and painful? And if so, can we do anti-inflammatories and therapy again? Or is it because the arthritis has gotten worse? Because that's the nature of arthritis is arthritis will get worse over time. But that can happen to a meniscus tear too. So <clears throat> let's say you have a meniscus tear. You're 50, you have a meniscus tear. It's a degenerative tear. We go in and take out the torn part of the meniscus. The reality is, is 25% of meniscus tears re-tear. So they go in with an e-scope, but that doesn't mean you're necessarily done. Once that meniscus is abnormal, you've had a meniscus tear, they go in, they treat it best they can, they remove the torn part. Remember, if it's torn, it's not functioning. You can still tear your meniscus again down the road. So all kinds of interesting things about meniscus tears. If you have questions, drop them in the comments. If you're seeing this later, if you, if you drop a comment down below, I'll check back to this live. We're going to leave this up. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking for what you want to know uh, with regard to future topics. I think meniscus always comes up, so that's kind of why I started with that. 